If you need to remove chroma key green screen from an image, the chroma key isolation action set will be of help. All you have to do is open an image and it has to be flat, no layers. There are two actions in the set, the chroma key isolation and the chroma key isolation plus. The first one works on its own, just run it and you'll get the original image on a separate layer masked where the green background was initially. If the photographer did their job well, you can even preserve fine details like bubbles here, but that would be more visible on a black background. The action puts the image on white by default, but you can easily change that by replacing the white background with any other color. You can do it manually in the end, or you can do it permanently by clicking twice on the last command in the action, which is the fill, and picking color as its contents. After you've selected the color, the action will use it the next time it runs. The action is very simple and it doesn't do any miracles. When you have hundreds of green screen images that don't pay enough to sit and twiddle with each, chroma key isolation will get you started. But if you need a better result, use the second action. This image here is far from perfect, it's dark, the backdrop is not very saturated. There's a green color cast on this guy's hand. But let's try the chroma key isolation plus action to see if we can deal with all these problems. Unlike the first one, this action doesn't run on its own, it will ask you for input quite a few times. The first time it will give you a prompt where you have to click on the don't flatten button. That's just Photoshop warning you about changing color modes, it's inevitable. Then you get a levels prompt where you need to move the sliders to get a solid black and white mask. If the image is no good, it won't be possible, but if it was shot properly, you'd manage to get a decent result. The closer you pull the sliders to the center, the denser the mask. You can pull them apart to preserve fine details. Press OK when you're done. Problem is, when you intensify a mask like this, you get rough edges and the Select and Mask prompt is there to help you fix it. Don't forget to pick a proper preview kind to see what's going on. Depending on what's going on, you might need to move a few sliders. If the edge is rough and hard, use the Smooth and the Feather sliders. Smoothing value should be around 3 to 6 and you should definitely avoid large numbers while feathering because the effect is rather drastic. I don't usually go higher than 1, otherwise the edge will be too soft. If there's a dark rim around the subject, you'll need to move the shift edge slider to the left to make it go away. That's pretty much all you need, but feel free to play around with the sliders to get a good grip on how it works. If there are some holes in the image, you can fill them with the brush tool. It's inevitable if there was something green, like a green color cast in the original image. Press OK when you're finished. Now, all that's left is manual work. First of all, the image on the top, which is masked, is not the original image, it has all the greens desaturated. That's because of the green spill, the green color casts that end up on people and objects when you shoot them next to a green screen. It means that if there was something green in the image that is supposed to stay, you'll have to restore the image to its original state. You can switch to the image, always check what's active, the image or its mask, and use the history brush on it to get all the greens back. But it doesn't mean you'll get to see them, because all the green stuff might also end up under the mask, so that you won't be able to see through. Switch to the mask and erase or just use a white brush on the areas where you need to restore the original image if you need it. The final question, what about hair? Can any of the actions do wonders on hair? No, not really. There is no magic in Photoshop and hair is a delicate thing. You can get a basic mask, but you'll have to twiddle with it yourself. I'll run the second action and move the sliders apart first to see all the details. 
Then I'll try to preserve as much hair as possible and I'll also set all the sliders in the Select and Mask prompt to zero. Now what we have here is a relatively decent mask, but it might require manual tweaking with the levels or even brushes in different blending modes. But that's advanced masking and it doesn't have to do anything with the actions this video is about. I'm only showing you what kind of result you can achieve with them.